Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a country with freedoms like no other. To honor America and those who protect our freedoms, both home and abroad, past and present, will you please rise and gentlemen, remove your caps and direct your attention to the flag for the playing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner by the Sheridan General Marching Band.
Welcome in football fans to the 2023 Ohio High School Athletic Association State Football Playoffs. This is the Division IV uh, 15 region. Tonight, a matchup between number two seeded Newark Generals and the number three seeded Bishop Hartley Hawks. And we are coming to you live from Newark, Ohio. We are here at Whitefield. Ryan Dietrich alongside Randall Sampson proudly broadcasting on the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Yamo Sports. Uh, real quickly, both teams coming off of two wins to get here into the third round of the playoff. Sheridan coming off a massive victory over Galea Academy, 42 to nothing. And Bishop Hartley getting past St. Clairsville last Friday, 23 to 13. And then the first round, Sheridan took care of Morgan, 49 to 28. And Bishop Hartley actually got a, um, had to advance through the first round via forfeit. So. Both teams coming off wins. Like I said, it's a packed house here. A lot of Sheridan Red in the house supporting their Red Rage all the way up here from Thornville, Ohio. And like I said, my partner, Randall Sampson, alongside me. Randall, what are we looking for tonight from this Hartley squad? Well, I think Hartley's trying to get back in his groove. Uh, last week they had that bye uh, the week before, so you had a two-week break, and they came out a little rusty. Yep. Um, lots of penalties, lots of turnovers. Yeah. Um, so, but they were able to uh, uh, fight through some of the adversity and uh, really climb through it. So I think that they're finally in their groove, but they are coming into a well-oiled machine. Uh, you know, 42 zip last week is just a thrashing for this level of football. And so Hartley has to come prepared. And here we are as Bishop Hartley Hawks takes the field. Yeah, Sheridan put up 35 points in the first half last week. Final victory, 42 to nothing. So the Hartley offense gonna have to answer a little bit there. And then the defense gonna have to hold strong and you can hear the cowbells as the Red Rage is getting ready to take the field. The Sheridan Generals band proudly welcome them on their team and here they come. Number two seeded Sheridan Generals. As you can see, the general's gonna be rocking the red tonight, the white pants. Bishop Hartley on the far side, their white unis, blue pants and the red trim. And we are just a, just over a minute away here from kickoff. Uh, Bishop Hartley will be receiving the ball. Sheridan won the toss, elected to defend. So Bishop Hartley will start off on the offensive side. And yeah, we'll see if they can get things going behind Michael Gaelic, Bryson Winbush, and that potent backfield. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be uh, one of those with offensive lines really going to have to grind in. Both sides are heavy run. So we're looking forward to what, who's going to adjust better on the run in this game of inches when you get into these running situations uh, when one kid's blocking another up front. So we're really going to have to uh, keep an eye out on what's happening inside of that box. And then we have two quarterbacks that have pretty good arms. So if, <laughs> if that defense sleeps on the edge, maybe that quarterback will float one over the top. We shall see on this Veterans Day weekend here in the United States of America playing football, freedom, high school, this kind of stuff doesn't get any better than this. Think, thank a vet today. Yeah, that's right. Good reminder there, Randall. And yeah, you said it is absolutely fall football Friday night playoffs live here from Newark, Ohio and Whitefield. And yeah, you'll notice a little bare bones scoreboard at the bottom. We do not have a clock tonight. With this uh, late scheduling trying to get here, we've got the broadcast, so I'll be doing my best to remind the fans what's going on. And yeah, and as on the other side of it, our main Yamo crew is over at Historic Cruise Stadium today broadcasting the state high school soccer finals. We got girls today and then the boys tomorrow. You can find that on the NFHS network as we're getting ready to go underway here. The Sheridan Generals back to kick. A little bobble on the field there. And swarmed at the point of attack. A pretty good field position to start. Bishop Hartley's going to start at like the 28. 
Well, that's, that's what you kind of want to avoid is just that tragic start. And uh, just a little bobble. It's okay. Everything's under control. Let's get the offense out on the field and see what happens. And as you can see, their defense likes to pack it in. And they put uh, two corners on the island and one safety back, three linebackers, four linebackers packed in inside. And we'll see what happens. First and 10 from the 26. Winbush in motion, handoff right up the middle, bounces it outside. Nice stiff arm from Ralston. Gain of about five on the play. Or excuse me, Robert Lathan. Blocking in the backfield. Yeah, it was Rory Ralston there, the sure fullback. But yeah, Robert Lathan bouncing a little outside. We're familiar with that. Good gain on first down. And that's going to be critical right there because I could already see the weakness that's happening. Uh, Hartley's trying to isolate Lathan with a cornerback, give one hard stiff arm that he has, and take off around that sideline. So let's see if they keep wearing off that edge tonight. Second and six from the 31. Gaelic under center. Jet sweep around the right end, able to get away. And a good bounce down around the outside. And that's the Coyote again, just getting around that edge. And I think that's what Hartley's trying to do. They're trying to get to that edge, spread them out, spread them out, spread them out, and uh, try to wear that edge down, and then come back inside with some body blows, just to keep them honest. Nice first down on the play as we get a good look at the replay there. Good bounce around the outside as they got some pressure into the backfield. First and 10, Bishop Hartley from the 36. If I could direct snap up the middle, maybe to the fullback, just to fall forward for a gain of a yard or two. And there you mentioned it coming back right up the middle. And that's a new little wrinkle for Hartley right there. Uh, so that's a formation we haven't seen all year long where you have the quarterback and shotgun and getting a direct snap with the, with the fake sweep and then just taking it himself in the middle. And he's not a running quarterback like that, but he can be productive for you. And that's the first time we've seen that uh, formation. So let's see what Hartley has up there sleeves. As Gaelic is under center on second nine, 11.05 remaining here in the first quarter. Ball on the 38 yard line. Robert Lathan up the right side. Big gain on the play of about 10 yards. That's going to be good Lathan enough for a Jerry first down, Bogemeyer. Bishop Hartley. Four, and Hartley's uh, going into a little tempo as they're getting on the ball, trying to go on the rush offense. So let's see what they do. Great run there from Lathan as he gets it again. He's got some room up the right side, breaks two tackles. Robert Lathan, first down, Bishop Hartley, all the way down to the 30-yard line. And that's a little baby toss sweep out to the side, and Hartley's just trying to wear that edge down as they get into this tempo, and now they're starting to slow it down a little bit. But Lathan does a great job just spinning around, keeping his feet moving, and moving the paw forward. Good work by the running back tonight, Robert Lathan. First and 10, Bishop Hartley, 10 to 25 to play. Ball on the 31 yard line. A little break in the action as the referee holds him up. All right, blows the whistle, clears the play. And Hartley's got a lot of chess pieces moving. Uh, the first couple series, the first couple plays that people moving around to get the defense off tilt. No motion on, <laughs> there's the motion on first and 10. Robert Lathan keeps his feet and stumbles forward all the way up to the 23-yard line. Now they're going to mark him at the 24. Gain a seven on the play. And so the way this looks to me is um, Sheridan has a defense that's built based off of formation. So Hartley is lining up in one formation and then switching it at the last minute so they're just all running around getting confused. Good plan of attack. It's working well for Bishop Hartley. Second and three. Ball on the 24. Gaelic gives the assignment to his offensive line. Back under center. Handoff up the middle. Rory Ralston and takes two defenders with him across the 15-yard line. First down on the play, Bishop Hartley. And he has to be one of the hardest running fullbacks uh, in this division, and there, there's a reason why this kid has that kind of strength in the middle. Uh, he can carry people with him, and he does exactly what you need him to do. Yeah, took it right at two guys, able to hold on. We're going to have first and 10 
Ball on the 14-yard line, 9.08 remaining here in the first quarter. Gaelic under center. Checks to the sideline. Toss to Lathan, he cuts back, counters up the middle. He's got a lot of, lot of room on the left side. Big stiff arm, Robert Lathan Touchdown. into the end zone. Touchdown, Bishop Hartley. Great counter and great vision there by Robert Lathan on the play. Able to cut it back to the left side, had a lot of room. And it's that jump skip that he has, right? So they do that little baby toss sweep. Then he gets up in the middle, he finds the hole, he's very patient, then he jump skips to the left. Boom, he's gone. And the next thing you know, he's out there man on man dancing with a DB, and he has something called a filthy <laughs> stiff arm, and he will put you in the dirt. That's a man. Yeah, good patient running from Lathan there. Bishop Hartley the steps in for the extra point. As Ryan Perry heads to the sideline. Swap a player real quick. Get the special teams unit out there. All right, get them reset. And sometimes you have an equipment issue. Yep. They just swap them in and out. Connor Bjornsson in for the extra point for Bishop Hartley. Kick is up, and it's good. Bishop Hartley with an early lead, seven to nothing. Here with 8:42 remaining in the first quarter. And I tell you what. Yeah, that was an excellent opening drive. Good three and a half minutes. Man, they didn't have any problems there. No, it was a great drive. You, you get the ball at your 30 and you drive all the way through. You're methodical. And it's just a chess match, the first couple sparring sessions that you have to kind of figure out who's where. But what I really like about the whole finish is the extra point. Because the kicker now has an ability to really open up his leg, to feel the air, to feel the wind. And he hit it all the way to the back of the bleachers. So I'm looking at probably about a 40-yarder if he had to push it for a field goal. Hey, that's good to know, especially in playoff football. Yep. When, you know, points are at a premium. And speaking of Connor Bjornsson, stepping back, about to get the kickoff underway is Sheridan is set to return. We're going to get our first look at the Sheridan offense here as they get underway. Bishop Hartley, 7 0. Kickoff underway. A little squibber towards the right sideline. He grabs it at the 22. Met by a swarm of the Hartley Hawks along the far sideline. And it looks like the Generals are going to get their first possession at the 22-yard line tonight. And this is what I like about that entire series. You have Rory blocking as a fullback, <laughs> running 10 yards as a fullback, carrying him, and then he comes out on the kickoff and makes the tackle and turns back around and plays defense as a linebacker. He's a man who likes to see the field. That's you know, just one of those football players. Hard to keep him off. Yes, sir. All right, number 13, Caden Sheridan, the senior quarterback for the Generals. He's going to start it out in the shotgun. Two wide receivers right, one left. Well, QB keeper lunges ahead across the line of scrimmage. A gain of about two on the play. And I tell you, he's a heck of an athletic quarterback, too. So I want to see him out there get in space a little bit, see how he matches up with the Hartley defense in space. But he is a great athlete, and Hartley's going to have to really do a good job containing him, make him run sideline to sideline, because once he finds a crease, he has the ability to wiggle and go. Hartley run defense has been doing a solid job all season. We'll see if they can hold him again tonight. Sheridan out of the gun again, handoff right up the middle, met in the back. Justin Munyon, the senior running back, tackled for a loss of about two on the play. Yeah, and that's Zhang over there, number 45, uh, sweeping through and making the tackle. And that's what you want. You want your linebackers to be very active in this. And what I like about that is Rory had slow read on the backside in case the guy, in case the quarterback held the ball. Yep. So they're playing very disciplined defense. Coach Birchfield with just a week's got this Hartley squad ready here on a Friday night. Third and nine, 7.20 here in the first quarter. 
Sheridan drops back. He's got some room, eyes downfield. Ball is tipped just over the heads of the secondary. Knocked down, incomplete. Pass is incomplete. And that ball hit about three hands uh, on the way through. And I think the quarterback could have ran and maybe picked up some decent yardage, but that Hartley defense was disciplined and just kind of maintained and held strong. Big third down stand for the Hartley Hawks. It'll bring up fourth and nine here with 7.15 to play. Sheridan with the punt unit on. Punt from deep in their own end zone. Returning for the Hawks is number five, Ryan Perry. And Perry backs away as it rolls across the 35 down to the 34 yard line. And Justin Munyon again into punt. All right, Hawks will take over to begin their second possession here with a seven to nothing lead. Here with seven minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Did you know that you can support Bishop Hartley and earn a tax credit on your Ohio income taxes for 2023? Visit emailroadscholarship.org to learn more about making a gift that turns your tax dollars into scholarships at Bishop Hartley today. Always a great cause there. Support your school and hey, get a little break on your taxes as Bishop Hartley gets first and 10, seven minutes left. Matt Gaelic with a big mistake on the play. Wide open, A.J. Winders. Touchdown, Sheridan Generals. Exactly what Bishop Hartley did not want to see. And the pick six uh, sitting on that corner. The corner was just sitting there. It was a miscommunication between the wide receiver and the quarterback. And so quarterback kind of jumps back and he sidearms it, uh, almost like a Patrick Mahomes pass on the side, a little quick out, but there was miscommunication. That was a great job of that corner, just sitting and holding and jumping on that and taking it to the house for the pick six. Yeah, just a quick screen. Great play by A.J. Winders as the kick is up. And it's good for the Sheridan Generals, Ben Fox. Knocks in the extra point. We got a tie game on our hands, folks. Seven all. And there's a little shot of the Sheridan, one of the Sheridan crowds down there. And Hartley got the ball right at the same location where they got it on the kickoff. So they were about the same location. You know what? Wash, rinse, repeat. Do the same plays and make them stop it. And then you adjust after that. Yep, just shake it off, regroup. And get back at it. There's a look at the Hartley squad coming back on the field. The return unit will get set. You've got Bryson Winbush back there and Ryan Perry on the far side. See if they can get a little return. Give them good field possession to begin with. And yeah, big answer by the Sheridan Generals there. Certainly livened up this crowd. It's got them rocking and rolling. Sheridan fans definitely outnumber the Hartley Hawk fans tonight. But that's all right. Yeah, they traveled well. They brought their entire crew. They got a great student section down there. And this is what you want to see with uh, playoff football. Yep. Uh, town, The entire town seems to be here and they're involved. This is awesome. This is high school football. All right, the Generals get set to kick it off. Another squibber down the right side. Fielded by Emoja this time securely. You got a man dragging him to the 40. Good work by Fidelis and Moja on the return there. Through a pile of bodies down to the 41-yard line. We'll see what Bishop Hartley can do with their third possession here. 6.43 remaining here in the first quarter. 7-7 seven seven all. And this is Hartley's third series this quarter, getting the ball in the exact same location. So, you know what? I'll go back to those eight plays that, that they had in that first drive for, for a score. See what you can do with that. Trying to keep the same thing going here. Matt Gaelic is under center. Joey Wooten in motion behind him. Handoff. Robert Lathan spin move. Looking for that edge. And he's able to get out to the edge and gain a few yards. Turn it into a positive carry. Excellent work by Robert Lathan. And Robert just has to be patient with it. I know he uh, he was stuck on the inside, but sometimes you just got to take that step forward and keep going instead of trying to bounce it to the outside. But he, he made some positive yards on that. Uh, took about 
40 yards to get to the sidelines to get four. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Second down and five, 634 remaining. Hand off again. Good patient run by Lathan. Almost to the line to gain. We'll see where they mark it. Just a little short of the first down marker. Gonna be a short third and one. Offensive line did a really good job sealing that time and now Hartley's back to that tempo to pick up the tempo a little bit as they're moving people around. And a big play by the Generals on third one. Matt Galix up for the loss. And I actually think Hartley had him out flanked. Uh, it was just a missed assignment on the block. They really had him. It was the right play call. They were just, uh, it was a missed assignment on the block. Looks like they had a little bit of room. All right, and that's Matt Gaelic on, down on a knee, a little slow to get up. Or excuse me, Lathan. But he's going to get under center. Fourth and three. Toss to Lathan. And a big stop by the Sheridan Generals on fourth and three. Robert Lathan stuck in the backfield, loss of one. It'll be a turnover on down. And Hartley went back to the same uh, short little baby pitch and the same result. They, they had a, a seal problem where they didn't seal on the, on the front side. And I always think it's a big problem when the offensive lineman are five yards downfield looking back. <laughs> That's when you know it's going to be a short game. Right now we're on a short field for the defense and in the uh, playoff kind of atmosphere, you got to punt the ball, field position, ball control, and uh, let's see if they continue to take the, the momentum here. Yeah, great starting position for the general Sheridan under center, slings it on the slant. Good connection, Bryson Ruff. Fumble, fumble, fumble. And it came out after contact. We'll see what the refs rule. And it looks like it's going to stay Sheridan ball. But good contact on there in the tackle. We'll take a look at the replay here. You'll see Sheridan top of the street. Screen rough right there. Second down three. Great stop by the safety there. Hard to tell if he came away with it. It was Donovan Tucker on the hit. Second down and three from the 35. Penalty flag on the play. So Hartley has just lost the entire momentum that they had coming from that first series. Driving down for a touchdown. They weren't in control of the game. Now it's flip-flop. And uh, you got a first down from a guy jumping off sides for Hartley. Offsides on the defense. That'll move the red. Red Generals forward, give them a first and 10, 445 remaining here in the first quarter. Ball on the 30. Joey Wooten with the boom. Big, My goodness. Big sack by Joey Wooten. Sheridan unable to do anything with it. Wooten just blew through there uncovered and just the seeing the quarterback nine. and he's just looking at that guy saying come here pork chop you're my dinner for tonight <laughs> <laughs> big sack on the play by joey wood loss of five that'll bring up second and 15. four minutes remaining here in the first quarter handoff up the gut that's a pitch Bryson Ruff to toss out the left side and fake me out even. Fake toss up the middle. A lot of room up the far side. There's Bryson Ruff with a gain of about 25 on the play. They caught Hartley getting aggressive on the inside, and so you didn't have outside support because it was an RPO on the outside. So you had the wide receiver out there that the cornerback had to have, and the safety didn't come down for the, for the pitch man. Great play by the Generals there. Great design, great design. All right, first and 10. Sheridan out of the shotgun from the six. QB keeper left, he's got a man out, block it up front, and it's a touchdown, Sheridan. 
Caden Sheridan with the QB keeper left. Untouched, good blocking by the Generals up front. And there's the man, Caden Sheridan, the senior, getting his fans, getting the crowd riled up. And that's a great play call. Uh, let the quarterback go left. What they did was they had two receivers on the right. They saw Joey Wooden go out and cover one of those receivers. He said, I'm going to run the opposite side of Joey Wooden. Extra point coming up for the Generals. Snap is down, kick is up, and it's good. Sheridan, and a big turn of events here, now leads the Bishop Hartley Hawks 14 to seven with 345 remaining here in the first quarter. It was all Bishop Hartley for the first four minutes, and it's been all Sheridan for the last five. So I'd like to see how Bishop Hartley's gonna respond to adversity here. Uh, dug themselves into a hole a little bit there uh, that they didn't need to do, but this is where they are. So let's see how do you respond, because this is how you have to come out. And you'll, you're going to get games like this. You've been in games like this, uh, and you've had guys on this field who've been in games like this, and the ability to respond is, uh, is the key. Yeah, a lot of football left. It's been an exciting first quarter here. We're just nine minutes into the game, but we've already got 14 to 7. That's it, the way this thing's going, this is going to be a two-bucket popcorn game, right? <laughs> Usually you get about one bucket to get you through the whole game. This is going to be two buckets. This is a good one. I don't know. I'm always a two-bucket popcorn kind of guy. There you go. Extra butter? Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, excellent facilities up here at Whitefield in Newark. Like I mentioned, a big crowd out here tonight. Always good to support the local team. As the Sheridan Generals get ready to kick, it's another squib right there to the 25-yard line. We'll pick up by Emoja again. He's got a little room up the middle. Burst of speed up to the 45. Good return by Fidelis Emoja. Now this is going to be Hartley's fourth series in the first quarter, and let's see if they can uh, get past the 50. So they haven't been past the 50 the last three. Yep. So let's see if this, this one will get them past the 50 and get some momentum going and uh, readjust. And, and continue to be creative like that first drive, right? They had a lot of window dressing, movement, uh, and really had that defense back on his heels. First and 10, Bishop Hartley from the 46-yard line out of the shotgun, fakes the handoff. Ryan Perry met in the backfield. Great defense by the Generals. Look like A.J. Winders again on the play, the man with the pick six. And that's the situation where the quarterback is getting a little gun shy from that last interception. So instead of leading the wide receiver, he threw it back a little bit so that defensive back doesn't jump on that pass. So the receiver had to go back a yard to get the ball and then change directions. That's a lot of movement instead of just a quick go. That brings up second and 13. Three minutes remaining here in the first. Gaelic out of the shotgun. Goes to the right counter up the middle. A lot of room for Robert Lathan. A nice move inside, and he's on the loose across the 10 yard line. Robert Lathan, it's a touchdown, Bishop Hartley. And that solves it all. That solves it all. Get back to what you do well. They hit him with a nice counter up the middle. And we're gonna take a look at the replay here. And this is part of the creativity, right? Creative formation, inside counter. Defense was confused. Robert sees green. Green means go. Go means touchdown. I'm in the end zone dancing, getting it on. Sheds a couple arm tackles, jukes by one guy. Connor Bjornsson in for the extra point. The kick is up and it's good. We got a tie ball game on our hands, folks. 14 all here from Whitefield, Newark, Ohio. Coming off the Robert Lathan 50-yard touchdown run. Did you happen to say this is still the first quarter? <laughs> Man, we <laughs> We're only been about 45 seconds on that drive. 2.43 remaining here in the first quarter. 14 all. Man, Sheridan scored 35 in the first half last week. I had no idea that's what we we're in for again. And like I said at the beginning, this is going to be that game inside of the trenches. So whoever's defense and offensive line can make the critical stops, that's what's, that's what's going to be required to win the game. Yeah, first team to make some defensive adjustments and able to 
provide some counter to these offenses who are both cooking at the moment. Connor Bjornsson gives the ball a little squeeze. Steps it off. And you gotta love kickers. They have all these little routines they do. Uh, you know, little flinches with their feet, the squeeze. Three, it has to be three and a half squeezes. Can't be three. It's like shooting free throws. Yeah. Here comes the boot. Fielded at the 20. Back up the middle, cuts back to the right. Almost to the 30-yard line. Corey Holden, the junior on the return. Got about nine yards on the return. Two that, that's, good ball, that's good ball placement by the kicker. Um, he placed it well right there and tried to pin him on that sideline and make that uh, receiver, instead of going north and south, make him go sideways, and that's what they did. Yep. Connor Bjornsson doing a good job. Things that get overlooked, special teams, make those extra points, and he's doing a good job giving his defense good field position as the Generals are gonna start from their own 30-yard line. Caden Sheridan coming off a rushing touchdown is in shotgun. Two wide receivers left, one right. Man in motion. Fakes the handoff, toss. Fumbled the toss and good swarm there by the Bishop Hartley Hawks defense. Xavier Martin Fuller on the tackle. And that's the X-Man crashing down from that safety position. He has pitch man on that. So he crashed down and he's there with speed and viciousness ready to make a play happen. He did a great job showing some patience. Knew his assignment. And then I'm looking at Xavier out there, number 16. I call him the X-Man. Uh, he is going to make a couple plays tonight and he has to make a couple plays for this Hartley uh, defense. So let's see if he steps up tonight. Second 14, just under two minutes remaining. Ball on the 26 yard line, three wide receivers left. Sheridan looks left, back to his right. Eyes downfield, pump fakes. Gets rid of it. Had a man toe in the sideline, but he can't find him. Winders was downfield. Sheridan just gets rid of it. That'll bring up third down and 14. 144 remaining here in the first quarter. And that's why this quarterback is so good. You know, he, he uses his head, heads on a swivel constantly, uses his feet, moves around, has a feel for the pocket. And then when it's not there, instead of taking the big loss for 15 yards like a normal quarterback would do, he throws it out of bounds and say, hey, let's live and fight another day. And you can see him, he's out there directing. This is what he does. He's the maestro of that entire offense and Hartley has to be able to create some disruption. Caden Sheridan out of the shotgun, third and 14, rolling to his left. Toss has the man wide open, cuts back, and a big gain on the play, Justin Munyon, and he's gonna get the first down on it, pick up a 15, first down Sheridan. And that's one of those plays where he just kind of floats it out to that receiver, uh, which was the running back that snuck out the backfield, and we had a defender right there, the X-man was right there, but came up on him too fast, and so he didn't have a chance to break down and make that tackle. Yep, got the speedster Munion into open space and let him do some work. All right, first and 10. Sheridan out of the shotgun again. A lot of Bishop Hartley Hawks in the backfield. There's the big man, Denham Cook. And that quarterback saw Cook coming and he just got into the fetal position and said, hey, I'm gonna live the fight another day. I that, cannot take this hit. Well, that's also a smart play by the young man. Don't try to do too much. Don't make any mistakes. You see him coming, get down. Yep, as a quarterback, you slide and get down and, and live to get up and, and you know play another down. That's right. Speaking of, it's second and 13. Sheridan with the ball on their 38-yard line. 30 in, seconds remaining. In the first quarter. In the first quarter. Oh. <laughs> We're almost there. All right, Sheridan out of the shotgun. Talking to his running back. He looks a little unsure back there. And yep. I think Coach Paul Culver saw. Yeah, it's Kate Sheridan. Caden Sheridan coming off with his hands up. Just a little miscommunication. Didn't get quite the play right in. So take a timeout here in the first quarter. 22 seconds remaining. All tied up. Don't miss out on your chance to own an original piece of the hardwood from the Bishop Hartley Gymnasium. Visit bishophartley.org slash history on the hardwood 
to learn more about owning your piece of Hartley history. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen, but check it out. That's a pretty cool thing Bishop Hartley has done. Look at that display. Own a piece of Bishop Hartley's hardwood. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, I remember back home they redid the bleachers, and so they did a similar thing. You could They made the chunks of bleachers into little benches that you could buy, you know, put it. So my dad's got a chunk of the bleachers out of the back of his house. Nice. So, you know, something's kind of similar. Well, they, they kind of did that in the Cle old Cleveland Brown Stadium, but nobody paid for it. They just took the bleachers out of the stadium and carried them home. <laughs> so I think they had the, the right heart set, but the wrong, wrong concept there. Around. All right, second and 13. Fakes the handoff, keeps it, shrugs off one tackle, but is swarmed by another three. And we got a late flag on the play. I think that was Zhang on the tackle. Yeah, 45, Jay Zang getting in. Let's go to the white hat and see. It's a loss of about three on the play. Yeah, and Harley put some pressure on that quarterback, so you're trying to make him uh, uh, go a little sideline to sideline action. And you get one guy hit on him, you have to wrap him up because that guy has some big legs on him, yeah. so he can really move and he can shed some blocks too or some tackles. All right, a little conference by the refs. Whoa. Looks like Bishop Hartley's backing up. I think that's a late hit on the Bishop Hartley Hawks after he gets that wrapped up here. The ball down to the 47 yard line of the Hawks. Sheridan has it first and 10. All right, it'll bring up first and 10 for Sheridan. We've got 10 seconds left here in the first quarter. We'll see if they run a play. It doesn't look like it. They're going to let the clock run out. So that'll take us to the end of the first quarter here from Whitefield in Newark, Ohio. The number two seeded Sheridan Generals all tied up with the number three seeded Bishop Hartley Hawks. 14 all. We'll be back for the second quarter here on the Bishop Hartley Hawks Network. Welcome back to the action, folks. Ryan Dietrich and Randall Sampson proudly broadcasting on the Bishop Hartley Hawks Network, powered by Yamo Sports. It's a handoff right up the middle on first and 10. Across the 45, that's number 27, Zach Hines getting in on the action, the 5'8 senior. Doing some good work, shrugging off a tackle. Looks like it'll bring up second and seven from the Hartley 44. And this is what I like. Uh, you got the JYD in there, Junkyard Dog, and uh, one of their players got into it, uh, Hunter Sites. Good football all the way to the whistle. They're rolling around, whistle blows, get up and they dap each other up, tap each other on the helmet, and said, let's go again, guy, let's dance. Caden Sheridan out of the shotgun, looks to his left. Rolls to his right, looks deep down the sideline. Fidela Mojas high point in the ball, defending. He had Winders on the sideline. Incomplete, it's gonna bring up third and seven. And you know what, after a couple gaps last week with the defensive backs uh, letting some uh, passes float through, miscommunication coming off that rust, Everybody's in their assignments tonight, so let's see if they can, can, can maintain that. Uh, Want to see some more pressure off the edges from uh, Denim Cook on that side. 
uh, doing some doing a great job putting some pressure on that quarterback. And the issue with Denham is he's so tall and he makes up a lot of ground, so he's on that quarterback quickly and forcing him to release the ball. Third and seven, 11, 10 here in the second. Keeper towards the left sideline, shoved out of bounds. Gain of two yards on the play. Good and this deep. seems to be a good matchup. Every time uh, Joey Wooten is matched up with the quarterback and they're running to his side, Joey Wooten seems to win that battle. Okay. So I, if I'm Sheridan, I'm trying to run away from that. And when I run away from it, the other side is Denim Cook. So now I have to pick my poison as to which way we want to go here. Fourth and seven, Sheridan back to punt. Nice kick towards the right sideline, lands at the 12, takes it, Sheridan bounce. Good punt team coverage by the Generals. Downing Bishop Hartley inside their own five yard line. That was a heck of a punt. A very directional and it hit, got a couple hops and landed uh, nice and soft for them. That Bishop Hartley penalty at the end of the quarter was 12 men on the field. Just had to clarify that for the folks watching at home. All right, 10-59. As Bishop Hartley begins their fifth offensive drive here from their own five yard line, goal line formation basically. And it's gonna be the trusty Robert Lathan dragging a couple bodies across the 10 yard line. Should bring up second and short. The ball carrier gets out to the 12 yard line. I believe if you do that play for the next seven or eight plays, <laughs> it'll get you close to the red zone. <laughs> no, no bones about it. They've been running the ball very efficiently here in the first half. So they've got second and three. It's Lathan again, same kind of thing. And you can see the big boys just put blocking guys 10 yards downfield. Yeah, and that's Junkyard Dog. He's down there just uh, taking helmets off. Uh, when you drive a guy into the ground so hard that his helmet pops off like a Pez dis uh, dispenser, uh, you love to see that in the big fellas uh, blocking downfield. So everybody has to have that same energy. A man that enjoys blocking assignments, that's for sure. Hartley is Gaelic. Checks to the sideline after he thought he saw a blitz coming. Gets back under center, 10 minutes remaining. Triple I handoff, Lathan, a lot of room, but we've got a flag right in the middle there. Robert Lathan, plenty for enough for a first down. But let's see what the call is on the field. Well, the official reached for that uh, flag before uh, the ball was even snapped. So uh, I think he had a predetermined. <laughs> yeah. Holding on Bishop Hartley. We'll see if we can see a little bit here on the replay, and it's right there inside. And he threw that real quick. Yeah. Well, it's one of those flags where the official is talking to the office alignment about hands, and they're trying to be gentle with them. And finally, they just said, hey, we're going to go ahead and throw, throw the flag this time. All right, third and eight from their own seven. 9.30 remaining here in the second quarter. Big third down for Bishop Hartley, deep in their own territory. The Sheridan fans are rowdy. Toss to the short side. Lathan met by a bunch of red jerseys. He's tackled back into the end zone, but they will stop his forward progress at about the two yard line. A loss of about five on the play. Yeah, Hartley went with their uh, typical conservative play, which is the, the toss to the boundary. And Sheridan's scouting was all over that. Uh, they did a really good job scouting that play, making sure that uh, they know what the formations are and the ability to move with that. And you don't even need signs from the sidelines to know that that's coming. <laughs> yeah, great effort there by the Sheridan defense. Fourth and 12, Hartley punting deep out of their own end zone. Ryan Perry, though, gives it a good kick. Field it at the 35, a lot of room to run. That's A.J. Winders again across the 15. Up the far side, he's about at the end zone. Leaping dive for it, but blown up at the goal line. Ryan Perry, the punter, saves a touchdown on the play. Good return. And the Hartley sidelines is screaming. They're saying that the guy uh, had a fair catch signal. And uh, I didn't see, we got to see the replay if he threw up a fair catch signal or not. But 
Just screaming that he, he's throwing up a fair catch. But they don't they don't have a fair catch there, so let's uh, continue to play. All right. A lot of commotion there at the end. Almost a punt return touchdown. Winder's unable to get to the pylon as he's met by Ryan Perry, the punter. And now the Bishop Hartley defense has got to hold tough. First and 10, Sheridan Generals from the two-yard line. 8.35 remaining here in the second quarter. Let's see if the Hawks can hold strong. Right up the middle, a lot of momentum. Touchdown, Sheridan Generals. Justin London on the carry. And that's just a dive up the middle. Uh, just knifing right through the, off the right guard. Excuse me, Zach Hines, number 27. Sheridan Generals in for the extra point. Dominic McKinney. Blocked. And it's blocked. Great block by Bishop Hartley. All right, after giving up just a one play touchdown drive, the Hawks hold strong on the extra point, block the field goal. They're only down six. 20 to 14, 8.32 remaining here in the second quarter, live from Newark, Ohio. And this is one of the reasons why we talked about you can't have penalties, right? Yep. So Hartley has the ball, getting ready to they're inside their own five. Hey, let's drive, third and one, first down, got a holding penalty. Yep. Now you're back to third and seven, can't get it. You have to punt the ball, short punt. They field the ball to 35, get it down to the two, touchdown. So these penalties have a way of creeping in. Yeah, it backs you up. You know, we talked about the field position game last week, and it hurts them right there. Sheridan able to field the own, their punt at the own 40, and that Winders has got some speed. He's an athlete. Give him an inch, and he can make the most of it. And so the Hawks are going to look to rebound, see if they can put together a drive here. One of those patented Bishop Hartley lets eat up seven minutes of the clock, trudge it down there, keep their defense out on the field. See if they can take it to them. The last time Hartley was in this situation, they were down by 7, 14 to 7. Didn't panic, get the ball back at about the 30. Next thing you know, 40 seconds or so, touchdown. Yep. All right, McKinney. Getting set to kick for the Red Generals. Back to receive for the Bishop Hartley Hawks, Ryan Perry and Bryson Winbush. Near side, fielded by Joey Wooten. Got a little shimmy step up to about the 34, and that's about the average starting field position for the Hawks tonight, right about the 35-yard line as they get that set to bring the offense back on the field. And we'll see what the impact's going to be on that blocked extra point as the game goes, because those time of, uh, plays are very critical. You bet. <laughs> Hartley Hawks down six to begin their sixth offensive drive of the day. 8.27 remaining in the second quarter. First and ten. He's got an edge. There he is, Bryson Winbush near the line to gain, just short of the first down. Could be second one coming up. And that's what Hartley's starting right, to get back to again, rush. right? That creativity, stretching that defense, using a lot of that speed. And then you come back with your bruiser, which is the, the running back in Lathan. And then you just got to keep mixing it up, keep mixing it up. Just enough for a first down. All right. We'll bring up first and 10 for the Hawks. A gain of 11 by Winbush. 8.20 to play in the second quarter. Two wide receivers, top of the field, one near side. Zhang again behind Gaelic. Takes a snap, drops back, airs it out. Oh, Fidelis and Mosha, did he catch it? Ryan oh, Perry my. with a heck of a catch on the play. How about that? Bishop Hartley gain of 35. Ryan Perry coming up strong with an amazing catch. And if you've ever seen a catch like this, Jesus Christ. What a catch Super by Ryan star. Perry. Oh, my Play, goodness. Lays out in the fingertips. 
First and 10 from the 25. Bishop Hartley with some momentum now. Two wide receivers left. Perry at the top of the screen there again. Hand off to Zhang. Sheds one tackle, but met at the line of scrimmage. By big number 10, that's Ben Fox on the tackle. And I love that play by Zhang, uh, getting up in that middle with that quick fullback trap. And he busts those pretty much, you know, he'll get about 20 yards off of it, so he's one tackle away. Matt Gaelic checks the sideline. Gets a new call. Audible is what you want. Second and 10, 7-10 to play here in the second. Winbush in motion. Robert Lathan up the middle. Across the 20 yard line, gain of a couple on the play. And I love that play. They send uh, Winbush behind him in motion, the Coyote. And that creates a, just a, a little bit of fear in your heart, makes your heart pound just a little bit harder. And then you lose track and Lathan gets the ball and the inside on the isolation. That's right, got to keep the defense guessing. Bishop Hartley uses a lot of pre-snap motion. It's a big play. Let's we'll see what they do here on third and six. 6.30 remaining in the second quarter out of the shotgun. Gaelic, Zhang in motion. Robert Latham with the handoff up the middle. A lot of room, stiff arm across the 10-yard line. Robert Latham with the first down. What? Run down by Ryan Coon. They almost took the official out, and he found a way to throw his flag. So let's see what, what happened. He All saw right. a face mask in there while he was getting taken out. All right, like you said, flag on the play. Let's go down to the field. And there you called it, face mask on the play. Move him forward another five yards. See if we can catch this on the replay. Lathan just finds a little bit of a seam and he meets the man right there. Yeah, right in front of the ref. He's got to clear his day. Look at it. First and 10, Bishop Hart. First and goal, Bishop Hartley from the five. Six, 10 remaining here in the first. Gaelic audibles to his tight ends. Goal line formation, power eye. Three stacked. Robert Lathan behind his blockers, cuts it back. Touchdown, Robert Lathan. Bishop Hartley in the end zone for the third time tonight. Robert Lathan from the five yard line. And Hartley has that, uh, that triple stack. We call that the Big Buford. So he got the triple stack Big Buford in the back. So it's a lot of meat back there. And they're just pounding and, and Robert found a way and uh, just slid right into the end zone. Yep, two tight end formation. with Those big boys on their splits. Two blocking backs and just lead the train. And Robert Lathan doing a good job showing his patience, able to bounce it outside as we've got Connor Bjornsson in for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, and it's good. And now Bishop meets the man at the goal line, crashing into the end zone. Robert Lathan doing his thing. And I love the way that he set up his block. He saw Zhang out there, and Zhang wasn't aware as to which way he was going to go, but he set Zhang up to make the block. That's the sign of an elite running back. When you can set up your blocks and explode through the hole. Yeah, good work by the young man. Got a bright future ahead of him and a couple more years at Bishop Hartley. Yeah. yeah, he's a great kid, a great family, obviously. Um, and he's a very soft-spoken type of kid. Uh, he's not a braggadocious kid at all. He's a kid that you want in your program. He's right. a great leader. Um, so I'm excited for him. Uh, hopefully this this off season, getting a, with some indoor track and running outdoor track because he's, he's his goal is to work on that top end speed. Sure. So when I get out in that top end, I don't have to depend on that stiff arm. I can just blow by guys. And you know, four or five of his teammates already recruited him. Said, "Hey man, we need you to run track with us." Connor Bjornsson in for the kick and a good boot. Caught at the 11. Nice return there by Sheridan. That's Zach Hines again. Looks like the generals are going to start this drive from the 37. We've got 548 to play 
here in the second quarter. Bishop Parley with a one-point lead. Yeah, I still got my eye on number 16, uh, Xavier Martin out there, the X-Man. And I think he's got a, he's got a play left in him uh, for this half. So let's see if he, if he can make a play or stop a play. First and 10 for Sheridan. Shotgun fakes the handoff up the middle, keeps it near side, still in the option to toss it. Caden Sheridan keeps it, tackled out of bounds. Right near the first down marker. We'll see where they spot the ball. And they had Hartley outflanked, totally outflanked where the running back and the quarterback had options. Usually somebody's getting attacked, nobody's getting attacked. So your best person on the field for Sheridan is just holding on to the ball and running it. And they give him a first down on the play. That was a good job by Joey Wooten on the near side to kind of hold this block and keep Sheridan from getting more than that. So it'll bring up a fresh set of downs. First and 10, 541. Caden Sheridan, the quarterback for the Sheridan Generals. Got trips up top, zero open. Man on man, let's see what happens. Quick Can't toss, let's... great catch by A.J. Winders. Keeps his feet somehow and gets a couple more yards. It'll be a gain of seven on the play all the way up to the Hartley 45. Ooh, Hartley got lucky on that one. That, could, that was just a few feet from going deep. Because if he squirms loose, there's nobody else left. When you're man on man like that, because everybody's locked up on their person. Good recovery by the Hartley defense, able to keep them short of the first down. It'll be second and four, five minutes to play here in the second. Out of the shotgun, handoff up the middle, met in the backfield is Hines. Tackled at the 50, it'll be a loss of four on the play. Big 8-6, yep. making that tackle, slicing through. You gotta love it when your defensive ends come crashing down. Yeah, there's a good look at the big boys up front. 86, Brendan Larratt, number eight, Denim Cook right there. Putting the pressure on him. It's tough as a running back when you're getting hit as you get the handoff. Bring up an important third and five here for the Hartley defense. 425 remaining in the second quarter. Shotgun, the play is blown dead. Looks like we're going to have a false start on the offense. Ooh, timeout, excuse me. Oh, timeout there. And we had the honey badger in the middle, uh, number 20 sitting in the middle at the free safety, crashing down towards that, uh, towards that sideline where Sheridan wanted to run. Discover the rhythm of any occasion with Yamo Media DJs. Whether it's a wedding, corporate event, or a casual party, Yamo Media promises an unforgettable atmosphere. Seamless transitions, customized playlists, dance lights, and pure energy can be expected when you hire Yamo Media to DJ your event. For more information, visit yamomedia.com and click on DJ services under the services tab. Yamo Media, achieve more. And Bishop Hartley would like to thank Page Tech Limited and Training ABC for being presenting sponsors of this broadcast. Their sponsorship of the school's Evening of Excellence helps make broadcasts like this possible. Training ABC helps develop training videos and courses for your organization. Visit trainingabc.com. And Page Tech Limited can help you turn your event into a dazzling affair. Visit pagetechltd.com today to learn more. Bishop Hartley, once a hawk, always a hawk. Once a hawk, always a hawk. And I tell you what, Yamo Media, I use them personally for myself. My daughter had a signing day, and Yamo Media was amazing. On the spot, professional, top-rated equipment. So Yamo Media is the place to be. Thank you, Randall, and much success. Your daughter is a Sheridan Generals convert on a big third and five. Munyon with the handoff right up the middle. Gain of about eight across the 40. And that's a big conversion on third and five. Good timeout taken there by Coach Cobra of the Generals. Four minutes remaining here in the second. And he had a forward lean and just kept his feet churning. And uh, Hartley had a hard time getting her arms around him, but that's a strong running back. The Generals showing a little bit of patience here, kind of just milking that clock. 3.42 to play. They're probably thinking they want to use this Take this last possession into halftime. 
they step up to the line as Coach Birchfield calls a timeout. We got a timeout, Bishop Hartley on the field. See what they can cook up. Going to be a big stand. There is 3.35 remaining just before half. The Hawks lead 21 to 20. It's cooling down a little bit here, but the stands are packed. And the fans are rowdy as can be. This is the third round of the Division IV State High School Football Playoffs. And the Generals brought a good crowd with them, and uh, the Hartley Hawks traveled well, as, as, as uh, we can see. They have a good contingency of blue and uh, red over there. Yeah, decent showing there in the visitor stands. All right, as we're coming back to the action, the Generals last ones to get on the field here after the Hartley timeout. Let's see what they can draw up. Three wide receivers for the Generals, two on the near side. Man in motion. Fakes the handoff, drops back, eyes left. Got a man, and he's caught at the five. Down to the pylon. And it's a big throw and catch. Bryson Ruff on the receiving end of that. And a great design play there from the Generals out of the timeout. It's going to bring up first and goal. And here's a look at the replay. Yeah, you had your corner out there, the X-Man. He bit on the out and up. So he jumped on the out, and he tried to make ground up. But that time, the guy had to step on him. He recovers, though, and saves the touchdown. It keeps him alive. First and goal from the two. Bishop Hartley in the mood for a big goal line stand. Out of the shotgun, handoff up the middle. Momentarily stopped, but he breaks the plane. It's a touchdown, Sheridan. And we've got a late flag on the play. It's Justin Munyon again on the touchdown run. Go down to the field, see what the call is. Looks like the touchdown will stand and there must have been some business down in the pile. Yeah, yeah I saw Donovan Davis dragging him back from the goal line, so we'll see. And yeah, one of the officials talking it over with Colt Culver there down on the near sideline. Personal foul on the defense. Some extracurriculars. And yeah, here's another look at the replay. Goal line formation. You can see him there. Munyon meets a guy. They had him stop temporarily, but he kept going. And yeah, just the lates right there. You'll see a little pushing and shoving right here in the pile afterwards. Yeah. yeah, it's deep in that pile. Something happened. McKinney in for the extra point. And it's good. 27-21. Sheridan retakes the lead after a big explosive play on the connection from Sheridan to Ruff. Hartley down six with 322 remaining here in the first half. And sometimes when you're down in that pile, you're making that tackle and you can't hear the whistle, so you keep driving. And uh, sometimes they they call that flag because you're you're going after the whistle. Oh, and these boys are fired up. I mean, there's yeah, there's lots of chirping and lots of chatting going on down there. And we're not even to halftime yet. We've got 322 remaining here in the second. Woo. Sheridan's getting set to kick off. Hartley's going to have another possession here. Might have to go get some more butter for this, uh, <laughs> this second Told bucket. Two bu yeah. yeah. This is a two bucket night for sure. And they'll enforce the penalty. Personal foul on the play. It's going to be enforced on the kickoff. So, Sheridan kicking off from the Hartley 45. Winbush on his own 10. Perry on his own 5. McKinney gives it the boot into the end zone over their heads. Touchback. 
Well, it goes back to what we said earlier, penalties. You can't afford to have penalties against a team like this because they will take advantage of it and they will jump on it and make you pay. So let's see, once again, how does Hartley respond? Yep. What do they do? Are they going to hold, uh, hold their water and uh, just be methodical about this? Get creative on the offense here. All right, first and 10, Gaelic shotgun handoff, Winbush on the sweep left. He had a little room, but a good tackle by number 54, Connor Backus. Making the arm tackle at the line of scrimmage, no gain on the play. And I like this play, I like that play, getting the ball into your, into your guy's hand that has some speed, make that defense get a little sideways, pick up a couple yards, keep them on their toes, make them keep guessing. From the 26-yard line, second down and eight, 252 remaining. Two wide receivers near side. Ralston and Lathan in the backfield. Winbush in motion. Fakes the handoff. Winbush with some speed open on the right side. There goes the Breaks Coyote. tackle and he's off to the races down the right side. Bryson Winbush. Oh, Coyote pulled up a little limp. His left leg, he got a, a little tight hamstring. He had about 30, 40 yards to go, and his uh, left hamstring just tightened up on him. Take a look at the replay. This is great motion here. Winbush goes back towards the line, and as they snap it, they're going to fake the handoff. It holds everybody, and he just spins off his man. You get an athlete, athlete like that into open space. Easy pickings. First and 10, Bishop Hartley moving the ball. 2.33 remaining just before half. Now somebody in the box has to tell him that Winbush is a little, little dinged up, that he cannot touch the ball with that left hamstring hurting. Robert Lathan just carries it into the pile. You gain a two on the play. It's gonna bring up second and eight for Bishop Hartley. Clock is running, 2.15 remaining before halftime. Ryan Perry, Bryson Winbush, far side of the field. Second down eight. Gaelic and Lathan in the shotgun. Gaelic rolls to his left. He's got Ryan Perry at the 50. Catches it a little stiff arm. Good tackle in the open field by A.J. Winders. Slams him to the ground. And that looks like one of those guys that are in the off season, they have to be wrestlers. The way he uses hips uh, to kind of hip toss him out. Down three. Oh. That'll bring up a crucial third down and three, 146 remaining before halftime. We got the ref stopping the play here at the moment. Okay, just resetting the ball. All right, here we go. Third and three. Robert Lathan up the middle. Breaks one tackle, carries two with him across the first down. Good extra effort by Robert Lathan. It's gonna be enough for a Bishop Hartley first down. And he is so strong and he ran right into a defender and his neck snaps back, but he keeps moving his feet and it keeps going. Gonna bring up first and 10 from the 45. Kalik under center. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. Just out of the fingertips of Winbush. Passing complete. Bring up second and 10. Ball on the 45, clock stops. One minute, 23 seconds remaining. When you have a tweak on that hamstring like that, you cannot finish your route. So you're off half a step on that route, and that's what happens on that, on that pass play. He was just off half a step and trying to round off that route on the hamstring. Yeah, you can see he's just a little, a little gimpy out there. Second and 10, out of the shotgun. Counter, Robert Lathan. 
And that should be a holding call on the play. We've got a penalty flag down. It looks pretty, at least from what I saw, it looked like a hold on Bishop Hartley as they're backing it up. Well, his hands got outside of his uh, shoulder pads. Yeah. And uh, usually that's the, that's the issue. You gotta move your feet and slide your hips across. But once your hands go outside of your uh, shoulder pads, they're gonna call that every single time. Yeah. Second down 20. All right, second and 20. Minute 15 remaining here in the first half. Out of the shotgun. Lathan in motion. That's a new wrinkle. Joey Wooten, little screen to the near short side. Gain of about five on the play. Obviously with the misdirection, Robert Lathan coming out here into the open. And that's a nice little new wrinkle in, uh, coming out of that play for Hartley. Uh, they haven't run that all year either, so they're throwing in a lot of new creative things that they seem to have worked in practice all year long, and now they're starting to unpack some of that stuff. Yep, expanding the playbook, using everything they can. Fidelis and Moja checks off, Brendan Larratt checks in. Third and 16. Takes the handoff, rolls to his right, has a man open. But Ryan Perry, in and out of his hands, can't come up with the catch. That'll bring up fourth down and 16. And that's not a bad play uh, for the fact that it's not an interception, not a fumble, and you have an opportunity to have the biggest play in football right now, the punt. So let's flip the field, uh, see if you can pin them down inside the 20, and see if your defense can hold for the next 54 seconds and take it in at halftime and readjust. All right, fourth and 16. Just across midfield, Brian Perry back to punt. Nice high kick to the 25 down the right side. Almost hit one of the Sheridan players. You're gonna be down at the 21 yard line. Another flag. There's another flag on the play. Looks like a sideline warning. Something we're familiar with here. Yep. And it's, yeah, it's a sideline warning against Sheridan there on that punt return. Few people just kind of creeping on a little early. We've got 43 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Hartley trails 27-21. The Generals are going to have first and 10. Sheridan takes over on the Ball at the 22-yard line. And I'll tell you, when I saw that flag go up, and I looked at their sideline, they really didn't look that bad. So I don't know why the official will call a, a sideline warning on that one. Just running a tight ship here. Yeah. It's right, round three of the playoff. That's it. Well, let's see if Sheridan's going to try to go up top with this. Nope. They're going to take a knee, take it in at halftime. First and 10, Sheridan takes a knee. Sheridan takes a knee. Second down, 14. All right, gotcha. Oh, one more snap here and see if they'll take another knee. Yeah, second. Nope, we're gonna let her run down. Five seconds. There you go. All right, and that'll take us into halftime, folks. The Sheridan Generals leading the Bishop Hartley Hawks 27 to 21 in a high scoring first half. And real quick before we go to halftime, just a congratulations, Randall. An image there. Signing day for your daughter. Oh, man, there we go. Just got a nice little shout out there. Tell us a little bit about her. Oh, yeah, that's Sophia Sampson. She's my daughter. She's over at Owen Tangy Liberty High School. We had signing day uh, here in Central Ohio, National Signing Day across the country. And so she is going to run track and field at the University of Buffalo. And uh, so we're excited about that. And uh, she's, uh, she's excited. She wants to be like the Yamo uh, media folks. So she's going into media studies. Cool. 
Uh, so one day she'll intern with you guys and, and you know, <laughs> awesome. do her thing here. But we are so excited. Yamo showed up, took all the pictures, the videos, uh, did a great job. I'm impressed. I think for signing date, that is a great thing to have. And uh, yeah, very we, cool. we're, we're just so excited. She was uh, 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 one of two uh, Central Ohio athletes that received scholarships for track and field. Uh, so it was her going to uh, University at Buffalo and Olivia Pace at Westville Central going to uh, USC. Uh, so we're excited about that, and they're really good friends. Uh, awesome. Olivia Pace's dad is Gay Pace, who's an alumni at Hartley. Okay, uh, So cool. it all runs in the family. family. There it is. All right, very cool. All right, folks, and there it is. We're going to send you to halftime break. Another shot there. And, yeah, we will have the Sheridan Generals band taking the field. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that on the screen for you to enjoy. They've got an excellent band. We saw them a little bit here in the warm-ups. So we'll send you to the down to the field. Enjoy the Sheridan General Marching Band.
That's another lead matchup. It's phenomenal. You're better. Right? Uh, we went over there for a game just to see it because we heard about the kids that are growing up being like big brains. So we went over there just to see it. Oh, you're sitting, we're sitting in the pool water. And we're sitting up in the back side of the pool stand there. And you can see seven different figures from that background. It's amazing how close they are to Zoom Town. You see all the lights and stage lights. That's what we found out St. Henry's was broken. For years I thought it was. When they went on state championships, we know that it's a public school. <coughs> and then yeah, one year it was Minster, Coldwater, Marion Stein, and Port Recovery, all of them have been given the game. And one of them, only one of them lost the thing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and please join the Bishop Hartley Band and the Sheridan Marching Generals in giving a hand to our veterans on this Veterans Day weekend.
song selected by our parents was from our senior show, featuring the music of the punk rock band Green Day. Most of the students in the band were not even born when this song came out in 2004. We hope that that doesn't make you feel too old. Here's American Idiot. Back in 1994, when our band's parents were closer to the age of their students now, the rock band Weezer came out one of their biggest hits. Here is their song titled after the famous 50s rocker, Buddy Holly. And on behalf of the Sheridan High School Marching Generals, congratulate Dominic McKinney for taking the new Sheridan record of 51 field goals in a single season. Congratulations, Dom! Now, back in the 1980s, that was a fantastic time to be a kid. No cell phones or internet, just playing outside, watching movies with friends, and listening to great music. The music video to our next song is generally considered the best of the 1980s. From our Halloween show, here is Michael Jackson's... <laughs> and though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver. For no mere mortal can resist the evil of the world.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the highlights from the first half. Welcome back, football fans. And just a reminder, I want you to save the date for April 13th. That is Hartley's Evening of Excellence, and that will be taking place once again next spring, April the 13th. Can't miss prices, a wonderful catered meal, and much, much more. The Evening of Excellence is a big auction with lots of great prizes. It goes to support the Hartley community. So just a reminder, folks, get it on your calendar, April 13th, Hartley's Evening of Excellence. And Ryan Dietrich here alongside Randall Sampson, and we are on the Bishop Hartley Network, proudly powered by Yamo Sports. Randall, man, it feels like forever in this halftime because we had such an action-packed first half. 27 to 21, seven touchdowns. I mean, we had a whole lot here in just two quarters and we had a blocked extra point in that so we'll see if that will linger along see where it, where it, where it falls where the chips fall but that one point always makes a difference uh hartley uh one of my buddies just sent us a message here on on the hartley facebook uh, page that said hey seven to six when hartley beat newer catholic so blocking that that extra point is critical the, every point is very important as we're here in the third round of the Ohio State High School Athletic Association Division IV football playoffs. And the winner of this, and I don't know if we can get a score or not, but the winner of this will face the winner of Steubenville in Indian Valley. Number one seed in Steubenville and number four seed in Indian Valley. But our focus is back here on the field. Hartley received the ball first half, so they will be kicking off Sheridan Generals looking to bring that potent offensive attack again. Let me see if I can find it. 
Updates from around the area. Steubenville over Indian Valley at halftime, looks like. 28 to 13, so Steubenville with a 15 point lead at half. And I tell you what, this game, sh Hartley should have this game well in hand, maybe 28 to seven. But so many penalties, so many penalties. Had a pick six there for uh, 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 just a mental lapse, but they got this whole second half ahead of them. Kickoff there, fielded by Corey Holden out to the 25. So Bishop Bartley's been doing a good job on the special team's end. You mentioned the block kick, but they've been pinning um, Sheridan deep in their own territory, starting at the 25-yard line here, whereas Bishop Hartley's been starting at their 35. So 75 yards to go with the Sheridan Generals going to bring to it. First and 10. Let's see, Caden Sheridan. Quarterback in the shotgun. And off to Munyon up the middle. Shifts to the side, spins off the tackle and loses another one, a big gain. As he's pushed out of bounds right at the first down marker. And that's the way Sheridan wants to start off a first down, right? So you pick up eight, nine yards and he's just moving his legs, moving his legs. Hartley's not wrapping up. You get a hand on him, and he just keeps moving his legs. He's a strong kid, so you really have to put him down on the ground. Yeah, great break. Breaking the tackle there, the spin move, keeping his legs churning. And it'll bring down second and one from the 33-yard line. Out of the shotgun again. Winders in motion. Hand off up the middle for a first down. Across the 35-yard line is Bunyan again. And I like the penetration that the, uh, the defensive line had on that, and that's a good sign for what they're trying to do as, as this series continues. First and 10, 11 minutes to play from the 36-yard line. Out of the shotgun again. Sheridan, Munyon behind him, two wide receivers near side. Man in motion. Up the middle again, met by a lot of contact. Still blocking after the play, that's the man, Donovan Davis. Getting in there, short gain on the play by Munyon. Two yard pick up, second down eight. Second and eight. I see Hartley has Julian Elliott down here at the bottom um, playing at the corner, so they made some switches here. And they go that way as he gets just away from Xavier Martin Fuller. That's Bryson Ruff. And that looked like about the same play they ran on that big game towards the end of the half. Bryson Ruff maybe just a little too quick for Xavier Martin Fuller. Yeah, so this the time they side. stuck with the out instead of going with the out and up. And as the, as the defender, you're really just trying to stay on his hip. All right, Sheridan moving the ball here early out of halftime. First and 10, blown dead. Flag on the play, let's go down to the official. Lining up in the neutral zone. Offside. Against the Hawks. Offsides on the defense. And that's one thing we talked about when we were away from break. Bishop Hartley's got to cut down on the mistakes. And you can see the big man Donovan Davis asking the ref, you know, who was lined up, what's going on. Give us a little bit of an answer. So trying to provide some clarity either way. First and five. Short yardage downs. Zach Hines checks in at tailback. Gets about eight yards on the play. Yeah, there's the mark. Should be plenty for a first down. They've got him marked up at the 42. Moving the chains, first and 10. As Hines switches in there, the senior running back. Kind of the dual threat, Munyon and Hines. And they're getting very creative with their offensive play calling and they're really doing a good job mixing it up. And they're trying to hit Hartley right off of that uh, C gap, uh, just keeping right inside of the offensive tackle. So let's see if they continue to do that. 
Rough in motion. Fakes a handoff, near side, tosses it. A uh, lot of room up the near side across the 25 yard line, out of bounds about 24. That's and running an RPO to the boundary, it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing to do. You have to have a special quarterback that can do that. Uh, so Hartley did a good job adjusting, filling in off of the tackle. And now the quarterback pulls it and runs that RPO down towards the uh, sideline, and you just outflanked. Well, and you'll notice Caden Sheridan, the quarterback, you know, running that option to the left. He doesn't, traditionally, he doesn't pitch it. No. He turns in straight. He throws that with some velocity. And it's an interesting, just an interesting way to run it. Yeah, when you have a quarterback that's, that's athletic, that can do that, so you're just flipping your hips and throwing it. Yep. Uh, so a lot of kids can't do that. And here's a kid that's probably been in the program a while, has a clear understanding of what the coaches need, and has repped it so many times. That's why he is the best player on the field for their team. I'm curious to see if Hartley can maybe take advantage of that. It's He chooses to do that at the last second. You get a defender in there a little close enough, and with some pace, that's tough for the running back to catch on the outside, so something to keep an eye on there. But you mentioned it, the athleticism from Caden Sheridan. He looks you know, kind of like Russell Wilson back up there. Right. He's able to just pivot his hips, keeps his eyes downfield, and he's fast. So yep. the Hartley Hawks have got their hands full as we're coming out of a timeout here. And there's one solution for this. For Hartley, pressure up front. If you can create pressure and get in his face, as fast as possible. We've noticed the first half, he'll slide and fall down. Yep, that's so right. So you have to get pressure in his face, but if you give him a clear view of the entire field, he will pick you apart. First and 10, nine minutes, 10 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Sheridan out of the shotgun. Hand off up the middle to Munyon, and there he is, Matt at the line. One flag, two Balls flag. Balls out, fumble, fumble, ball's out. There's a marker for the fumble. Yep. Partly has it. And it's a turnover on downs. Bishop Hartley takes over out of the fumble out of the middle. Let's take a look at the replay here. And you'll see it, Munyon gets the ball just right up the gut. Yeah, That's you exactly can, what Hartley wanted. You just wanted. see a Hartley player diving on the ground. Couldn't see it come out of the pile, but there you go, Hawks celebration. And it's a big turnover on downs. Bishop Hartley gets the ball back. First and 10 from the 26 yard line. Robert Lathan patient behind the pile, maybe gain a one or two. I apologize for the delayed reaction on that play. I didn't see the ball come out. It was, in the, it was in the middle of that skirmish yep. where the ball just kind of slips out and you can't see it. Even the refs had a difficult time seeing it, but they made the right call. All right, let's see if the Hawks can make the most of the fumble. 8.35 to play, second and eight. An important drive here for the Hawks to establish some offensive momentum in the second half. Winbush in motion, toss left, he's got some room. Shoved out of a bounds, 31 yard line. Winbush takes the pitch, knocked out of bounds by Ryan Kuhn, number 12. Good pursuit by the Sheridan defense on there, tracking down the Coyotes and just sprinting towards the sideline. And it looks like he got his hamstring worked on a little bit at halftime, uh, so they put some treatment on it, and he's back out there. Because in this cold weather, it's just getting colder and damper. Uh, for these guys to change directions that quick, it's tough on your hamstring. So. Well, and you got Joey Wooten in the slot there as he comes in. Winbush checked off to the sideline. Ralston and Lathan in the backfield. Hand off to Robert Lathan, cuts it back and then cuts it back again. Nothing doing on the play. That Red Rage defense showing up strong. Going to be a long, going to be a long third and five. Or excuse me, fourth and five. That was a good conservative call by Hartley trying to uh, go back to their, to their big man in the middle. Just, uh, See if you can find a hole there, but that defense was swarming all over. They did a good job playing uh, playing their positions and standing their ground. All right, fourth down and four from the 33, 750 remaining. Hartley can't get much out of it there. I doubt we'll see a fake punt, but you never know. It's playoffs, Coach Birchfield might get a little fancy. Taking a little bit of 
Took a little bit of the wind out of the sails. And we had another equipment situation, so the refs had to hold it up. Ryan Perry back to punt. Short. Ooh, sticks in the turf, pops straight up, doesn't get a roll. And Brendan Larratt will down it at the 38-yard line. The Sheridan Generals are going to take over on offense. 7.41 remaining. Here Hart Hartley's in. offense couldn't take advantage of it, so they just have to be able to they have to be able to take advantage of those turnovers and hopefully uh, get Sheridan on a long field, get them to punt, and then uh, flip the field again. So uh, this is part of the chess match that you have to endure. And let's see uh, both defenses starting to get a little bit stout as the evening's getting cooler. And uh, we'll see what happens. Yep, chilly November night. After all that offense in the first half, both offenses stymied on their first drives. First and 10, Generals airing it out deep. A.J. Winders again. But Fidelis and Moja number two getting in on the breakup. Got in between his man and the ball. And this was the critical part that you'll that you'll see for that quarterback. Like I said, if you put pressure on him in his face, uh, he does not perform at his best. So you had Denim Cook coming off the edge, and he just basically put pressure in his face at 6'4", 230, barreling down at him, and it just creates a little twinge on that ball when you throw it. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the secret for this Hartley defense. You have to put pressure on that quarterback whether he's running the ball or passing it. Got to get him rattled a little bit. Second down and 10, handoff up the middle. Munyon again. Hines, excuse me, Hines is back in there. And the big 8-6 was down on there, uh, pinching down as a defensive tackle. And it's great to see that uh, defensive lineman are starting to pick up the pace a little bit for Hartley. Yeah, yeah causing some... Trouble down there, Brendan Laird, 86, pinching down, helping Donovan Davis wrap him up and throw him down. Going to be a third and 10 for the Generals, 7-0-4 in the third. And I want to see uh, down here at the bottom, they're going to go right here down at the bottom with Twins. Watch the, uh, watch the little out and up move. Hopefully they don't give enough time. Donovan Davis got a good jump on him. Yeah, Winders across the middle with the catch, and he's some room to run up the right side. Scoots out of bounds across the 40-yard line, and you said it right there. Winders and Ruff ran a little cross route here on the near side. You'll we'll see the two receivers. One out, one goes in right there. Just sneaks behind him. Good patience from Sheridan. Ralston just drifting in that zone. Sheridan just waited for his man to get behind him and delivered on the mark. First and 10. Another big play from the Sheridan air attack. And that's Caden Sheridan air attack, the quarterback. As he's in the shotgun again, handoff. That's Hines. Met at the line of scrimmage. Big contact going nowhere, but we've got a yellow flag on the play. We'll see what the call is. Looks like it's right there in that interior. Yeah, General's backing up. General's call for personal foul, chop block. All right, personal foul. We got a chop block on the play. Chop block, yeah, that's, that's tough. Tough to tell on the cam in the pile down there. The Sheridan crowd is not too happy with that call, though, as it backs them up. Going to be a first and 25. A lot of yards for the Generals to make up here and after the bad call of the chop block. A lot of unhappy fans in the crowd. The boys get back pushed across midfield from their own 47. And in motion out of the shotgun. Up the gut. That's Hines again with a nice burst of speed, a good five yards on the ground. That's a good little carry there for first down. Shortens it up a little bit. Second 19. Just chip, chip away at these long ones. Yep, and that's that's what you have to do. You get a little bit at a time, and there you got five. Um, you're not going to get it all at once. 
but at least you're getting the ball across the 50, and if you don't get it, you can flip the field with a punt. Second down to 19, ball on the 47, 515 remaining here in the third quarter. Takes a snap, a little wobbly, oh, just out of the fingertip of Winders. I might have been bad at it for the Generals. Steps up in the pocket, a lot of room to run for the Generals. Steps up in the pocket, a lot of room to run. Rips one across the middle. And they're giving him a catch on the play. I oh, one was... waves it off and one's giving him a catch. Now they're talking. And that's Jay Zhang in there on the defense. They wave it off, yep. wave it off. Yeah, pass incomplete there. You called it, Randall. One of the refs had it as. But a good breakup by number 45. Jay Zhang for the Hawks. So this is what we talked about. If you don't get the first down, you at least got the ball across the 50. Let's see if you can flip it with the punt. And the last time they did this, they pinned Hartley inside of the five. Yep. And then they returned the punt for, for almost a touchdown, so. Close on the block there. Ryan Perry waves a fair catch. Bounces out of his hands, it's recovered by the Sheridan Generals. That looks like A.J. Winders making a play again. There is no ruling on the field. It looks like a Sheridan touchdown they're gonna see. He can't advance the punt on a muff punt. There you go. But this is why you call the punt one of the most important plays of the game because so many things can happen and here you have a muff punt. He just lost the ball in the air, lost his balance and touched it. Yeah, and tough to see there just Perry backpedaling. Gets himself too close to the line. Has a second guess where he's at. And here we go, another mistake by the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Costly, giving the Generals the ball inside their own 14. Possession to start the, inside the red zone. All right, 4.51 to play, first and 10. They're resetting the play nice. clock. All right, there we go. Yep. All right, here we go. Three wide receivers out of the shotgun. There's Keeper no to the right. Point. Sheridan got blockers in front of him, trying to find room. He trucks one man across the five-yard line. Great run by Caden Sheridan there. And the tackle on the play, that's Donovan Tucker, who kind of got steamrolled, but was able to hold on. Caden Sheridan with a nifty run there, making his way behind the pile. And that'll bring up first and goal. And this Hartley defense's energy is totally zapped and after it, that uh, muff punt. Yep, and here's a so. good look at the replay. On the far side of the field there, you've got Sheridan just finding his way behind the pile. Does a good job. First and goal. 425 remaining. Sheridan hands it off. Met at the line of scrimmage. Gets a yard on the play. Tackled Denim Cook in there. We've got Donovan Tucker in there again. And this time they've got the bigger back, Justin Munyon. 6'1, 200 pounds. First down, General. First and goal. All right, four minutes remaining, and that was just enough for the first down. Excuse me, it was second and one. So we've got a fresh set of downs, first and goal from the three-yard line. And oh. Hines trucked at the line of scrimmage. We got a flag on the play, though. Okay, the flag down on the far side of the, the far field. side. Near side of the field, there was a little extracurriculars that the fans are yelling about. And there was no flag for any of that uh -huh. stuff, so no. it was good football. <laughs> Coach Culver there for the general, way out there. All right, refs are conferring. They're talking it out. We're going to wait and see what the signal is. That was a big hit by Donovan Tucker and able to hold his man up. 
I think that was that was Rory, the, the middle linebacker, came through on the middle. A big tackle, but let's see what the legal formation called against the generals. A legal formation called against the generals. So that'll back him up 10 yards to the 13. Oh, excuse me, I'll back him up five yards to the eight. Okay. All right, let's reset. Let's see what happens now. Must have not been able to blow the play dead there. That was, well, I can, the Sheridan head coach, Culver's, is hot down here on the near side. The refs are conferring again and getting reset. And let's see what the deal is. Is the They haven't even started the play clock yet, so here we go. All right, here we go again. First and goal from the eight-yard line. 325. Wide receiver right, Sheridan, the keeper left. Got Hawks in his face, no room to go. Swarmed at the line of scrimmage. And here we go, we got another flag on the play. And I see him. We got a late flag. Um, But it was a clean tackle, clean football. Right. Looks like everybody got up and they just threw a flag. So let's see, see what's going on. And you can see Emoja and Caden Sheridan tapping each other on the back. Personal foul on the defense. Maybe a face mask in there. Okay. I think it was just. They tackled yeah, him too hard, We'll maybe? take a look at the replay. It maybe he said something. The ref was right in there. That just looked like a good gang tackle, and they brought him down. Oh. Uh, yeah, Emoja shoves a man. Number 20, Munyon is down there on the ground, and it looks like Emoja was kind of over him, gave him a late shove just after the hit. All right, back to the action. Second goal, three minutes remaining. And another flag. Sorry, folks. Another flag. Pause in the action. Ball start on the offense. It'll back the generals back up. All right, getting a little sloppy here in the third quarter. Yeah, it's like a seesaw, just kind of up and down, up and down. Yep. And well, and yeah, and both teams just making stupid mistakes here at this point. Got to clean it up a little. And this is where the coaches have to block out the crowd. Oh, yeah. Because the coaches are getting the motion of the crowd, right? <laughs> Mom yep. and dad in the crowd yelling, screaming. Uh, Uncle Larry. <laughs> yep. So they're calling a timeout, so let's regroup. All right, timeout. Sheridan on the field with 2.57 to play in the third quarter. The Generals lead the Hawks 27-21. And don't miss a chance to own a piece of Hartley history. You can scan that QR code there on the screen. But you can own an original piece of the hardwood from the Bishop Hartley Gymnasium. Visit bishophartley.org slash history on the hardwood or scan the QR code to learn more about owning your own piece of Hartley history. And you can see it right there on your screen, folks. Now, there at, the, at, the, at Hartley's basketball floor has been some amazing games, amazing wrestling matches back in the day, amazing volleyball games. Sure. But the one most important thing, amazing homecoming dances. I was going to say. Proms that, yeah. back in the day. They used to have prom back oh, in the, yeah. the gym. Uh, after football games, on Fridays after football games, they would have a dance in the gym. That's cool. Uh, and, you know, you go all the way back to some of the people who are watching right now. They might have had a sock hop. <laughs> so it, it just depends on <laughs> what generation of hawk you're from. But get yourself a, a piece of history. Piece of all right, history. In the making right here, round three of the 2023 Ohio High School Athletic Association State Playoffs, 257, second and goal. Caden Sheridan out of the shotgun, handed off, money up the middle, met by a bunch of Hartley Hawks. Jumping on the pile, and you can see it again. Donovan Davis on the bottom. And there is a lot of commotion from the crowd. It's getting pretty physical and getting pretty chippy down there. Right on cue. Another flag. Let's see if Donovan drew the flag or if he lost his cool. 
All right, Donovan Davis is headed to the sideline. Yeah, and this is what you don't want, right? We said we talked about penalties. You cannot put your team in a bad situation. And Donovan is, is, is caught up in the emotion of the game at the moment. So he has to be able to maintain himself. And we've had this conversation where you cannot. And that's a dead ball foul on the play. And sportsmanlike conduct called. And yeah, here's a look at the replay. Third and goal. All righty, second and goal. Left side. Toss to the backfield, leaping for the pylon. And it's a touchdown, Caden Sheridan. They made it look too easy on that play. A lot of good blocking for the general quarterback as we look at the replay here. They got the tight end coming in motion and then one, two, big block right there in the backfield. And he just does the rest. And you can see it, Ryan Perry just up and over him. In for the extra point, McKinney. Oh, up and it's good, just oh, barely, about yeah. a foot over the crossbar. But Kitty makes this one, 34-21. Sheridan Generals with a 13-point lead, 2.32 to play here in the third quarter. And it is a rowdy Red Rage kind of environment as the Sheridan General fans burst into applause and ringing the cowbells after that impressive touchdown there. Man. Yeah, and, and this is what, what we talk about. You cannot allow penalties to beat you, right? So here Hartley has a great stand on defense, and you might hold him to a field goal. You're doing a great job. You might hold him to a field goal. But then the player did nothing wrong, but he lets his emotions get the best of him, and he back talks the official or asks the official a question. The official throws a flag. It wasn't anything to do with the play. It was his interaction with the official. So it's the emotion of the moment that gets, but you cannot put your team in a bad situation like that. That is a no-no. It's an absolute no-no. So you have to go to the sideline, get your composure. And if you can't get your composure, hey, we got to find some other dogs on the sideline that want to come in and play within the lines and really dominate this game and put us in a position to win. Yep. We and can't have a liability out there. And it, you know, and with Donovan Davis, we got You got to have him out there. You got to have him out there, but he can't be a liability. So. All right. He has to figure that out on the sideline. Xavier Martin Fuller on the return. Corralled at the 28. The Sheridan Generals are pumped up. All the momentum at the moment for sure. All right, Bishop Hartley Hawks taking over on offense. We first and 10 with their ball on the 29 yard line. 2.25 to play here in the third quarter. And once again, Ryan Dietrich, Randall Sampson. Proudly broadcasting on the Bishop Hartley Hawks Network. Brought to you by Yamo Sports. And just a reminder, after we get from first and 10 here, handoff to Lathan. Another handoff to Winbush inside. And a big gain of 12 on the play. And that's the first time today that they ran that inside yep. counter play. So that's a great response. Let's get back to our bread and butter. Uh, let's get in the middle. Let's figure out what we're going to do. And here we come with about 11, 12 yards. Yeah, and here's a good look at the replay of that inside counter. You give it to Lathan, and then he meets Winbush on the counter inside. Big gain on the play. Throws a little wrinkle at the defense. Here we go. First and 10, 43-yard line. Gaelic under center. Winbush in motion. Takes the handoff. Rolls to his right. Let's it go. Just a little behind and pass incomplete. And just a little note about the broadcast today. Um, we're, it's a little bare bones. Our main crew is over at Historic Crew Stadium broadcasting the Ohio High School Athletic Association State Girls and Boys Soccer Finals today and tomorrow. Those can be found on the NFHS network. Uh, so that's why we've got a little less 
One less camera, a few less graphics for you. This was the last minute we brought the crew, so we're happy to be here either way. As Gaelic tosses it left to Robert Lathan, and he's tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Oh, man. Gained a yard on the play. He had some room, though. He had some room. He was going to turn up the run, and the turf monster got him. But as always, a big shout out to our executive director, Adam Dell, who actually was making the soccer broadcast work today, and then he's here putting this one on. So a big shout out to the man, Adam Dell, and then our two guys on camera tonight. I've got Jason and Marlon always doing excellent work. So love the crew here at Yamo. Absolutely, great bunch of guys working hard, making it happen. Third and eight, Gaelic rolling to his right. He's got him. And he found Winbush, but unable to come up with the catch is Bryson Winbush. Good defense on the play. Gaelic just let the ball go a hair too late. I think he had him. But just a tough pass from the man. And that'll bring up a fourth and eight. Did a good job keeping his eyes downfield. Yeah, need a little more pace on that. As Bishop Hartley brings out the punt unit. One minute remaining here in the third quarter. Fourth down and eight. Punting from the 44-yard line. Ryan Perry back to punt. And it's a fake. Oh, wow. Wooten wide open up the left side. Joey Wooten, a ton of room. And he's got the legs. He's oh, still going. He's, he's got room in. up the left side. Wrangled out of bounds at the 10-yard line. And the fake punt catches the Sheridan Generals by a by surprise. A gain of 45 on the play. And there's no flags. No flags, and here it is. A good look at the replay. Just a direct snap to Joey Wooten. And great blocking the whole way. Entirely off guard, and they thought they shoved him out at the 25, but he had a little bit of room. Yeah, I thought he and ran that, out of room over there out of real estate, but he just tiptoed yep. down the side. And that's what Bishop Hartley needed, breathe a little life into the offense, and they've got first and 10, first and goal from the 10-yard line, excuse me, out of the shotgun. Keeper behind his blocking squad, Galix got some room. Spun down to the five-yard line, gain of five on the play, that'll bring up second and goal. Brought down by Jared Vogelmeyer. And that sure put a silence on the Sheridan crowd here in front of us. Well, and let's that, see if Hartley's going to try to score here with, uh, with the clock running down for this quarter. 26 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Gaelic under center. Zang and Lathan, hand off to Lathan, spins to the left side, cuts it up, field, big hit, and big hit again. He avoided two tackles, but then took two others. That brings it down to three seconds, and that'll bring us to the end of the third quarter here from Whitefield in Newark, Ohio. The Sheridan Generals are still leading Bishop Hartley, 34 to 21. We'll be back in just a moment on the Bishop Hartley Hawks Network. back to Whitefield in Newark, Ohio. Ryan Dietrich and Randall Sampson here on the Bishop Hartley Hawks Network, powered by Yamo Sports. The Sheridan Generals lead 34 to 21 here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. We just got done with a fake punt, a gain of 45 yards on the play, brings Bishop Hartley up for a third and goal from the four yard line. It was a quiet third quarter. Sheridan scored once to extend the lead to 13. A lot of penalties in the third quarter slowed the action down. So Bishop Hartley trying to breathe a little life into it. Third and goal. Robert Lathan up the middle through the contact and it's a touchdown. Bishop Hartley. Robert Lathan, important touchdown there. Nice and simple, keep it easy. 
Third and three, get the yards. Good way to start the fourth quarter as the Bishop Hartley Hawks push one in. And just when you thought Hartley was out of it, chips were down, the mow is gone. Yeah. Penalty after penalty after penalty. Can't get the defense off the field. Fake punt gets them going. And, that and now they got the juice back. Yep, special teams has been good for the Hawks tonight as Connor Bjornsson steps in for the extra point. The snap is bobbled. And that must have been the announcer jinx because right on cue, he fumbles the snap and that keeps it a seven point game, 34-27. Just been that kind of night. Simple yep. mistakes all over the place for both sides, for both sides. And just like that, they get that point back that's been hanging over their heads the entire time. So let's see if this Hartley defense can get back on the field, maintain their composure, get a three and out, or at least get a stop and uh, see what they can do next. We have got a wild fourth quarter coming up. Hawks down one. We appreciate all the fans out there tuning in who couldn't make it here to Whitefield and Newark. I hope you're all having a wonderful Friday night and are ready for a fantastic finish. As the Hawks get ready to kick, Connor Bjornsson stepping it off. 11.56 to play here in the fourth quarter, so all of it left. Oh, good kick. Deep down to the 15. That's Corey holding again on the return. Good coverage by the Hawks special team unit. And that's the Honey Badger down there making that tackle. He's been quiet, so he's starting to come alive, lead that defense a little bit. And that's what we need, number 20, Donovan Tucker in there on the coverage. The General's going to start the drive with the ball at their own 25. 11.51 to remaining. Caden Sheridan coming off a rushing touchdown. He's done it all. He's made some great throws. And he's got the ball. Got it done with his legs as well. We'll see what they come out with here. Two wide receivers near side. That's Winders and Huff, his two main targets as Caden Sheridan is in the shotgun. Right there, the key to that is that pressure. Met at the 30. That was a good run by Corey Holden. Up to the 30-yard line, gain of five on the play. That'll bring up second and five, 11-35. The interior did their job, and then you can see that uh, Denim Cook came off the edge and provided that pressure in the face of that quarterback, and then he's going to pitch it quickly, and that gives you uh, safety time to come alley fill and make the play. Yep. The secret to beating this quarterback is pressure. That's the only thing you got to do. We'll see if they can bring it here on second and five. Hands off up the middle, Munyon tackled through the line. That's Ralston on the play. Gain of three. Gain of four, it's gonna be third and one. All right, we'll see what the generals dial up here. Third and one, ball on the 34 yard line. They've had a lot of success converting on third and short tonight. They come out three wide receiver set. Let's see if they try that RPO again that they were very successful with earlier to the boundary. Another fakes the handoff up the middle of the money, and it looks like the ball came out. Caden Sheridan and the ball did come out. Looks like there was a fumble on the exchange. Um, so it's that mesh point that you call the exchange. So it looks like quarterback didn't know whether to pull or hand it off, and then they muffled the ball. They were able to recover at the end. So Hartley's defense uh, at least held for now. Unless there's a fake punt. Good eyes on that one, Randall. Close call there to bring up fourth and one. We'll see if the Sheridan Generals. He didn't even tackle him. Yep, there's a punt. He just he had plenty of room. Tucks it and runs. Yeah, I mean he's he's clearly a yard out of bounds. He's in the red. Yep. Just a little overzealous there. Jay Zhang, the soft the youngster, the sophomore on the penalty. And it's been that kind of night for Bishop Hartley. Let's see 
if they can regroup. First and 10. The Sheridan Generals have the ball at Bishop Hartley's 41 yard line. There's nine minutes and 50 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter. This division four action. Sheridan keeps it to the right. Blasted out of bounds by Joey Wooten. Tough I actually kid. like that. I like that play call by uh, the Sheridan offense. When you have your best player, just let him hold the ball and make something happen. But Kate. Joey Wooden said, hey, you're not going to make something happen on my side. Go somewhere else. Caden Sheridan showing some toughness. You got to think, Joey's a six foot, 200 pound safety slash linebacker with a lot of speed and a lot of power. Yeah. Two wide receivers near side, second and 11. Up in motion. And off up the middle. Justin, Justin Munyan, Munyan on the carry. Looks like he got back to the original. Little pass, gain of about four on the play. All right, time's Munyan ticking away. The general's still with a seven line. point lead. We're down to nine minutes and 30 seconds here in the fourth quarter. Third, seven. Third and six. Let's see what the general's gonna dial up here. Running the ball this drive. We'll see if they use that play action and open it up. For one of his favorite targets, he's got A.J. Winders there, number five, at the top of your screen. Yeah, when they run that trip, they do a lot of uh, uh, laterals over there. And there it is. Incomplete on the play. Good breakup. Tough there for the generals to complete. That'll bring up a fourth and six. All right, let's see what the generals elect to do here. So if I'm Hartley, territory. if I'm Hartley, I'm telling my uh, my deep guy, if you have to take a step back, don't catch it. But if you catch it, you got to get some yards. And that's Joey Wooten deep. Man, we just talked about a little oh. squibber. Oh, just a, shanked it right off the side of his foot. And that was Justin Munyon back there punting. Excellent break for the Bishop Hold Hartley on. Hawks. Oh my. Yeah. That was a three-yard punt. No, two and a half. Off the little shank pump from Munyon there. Big, big break for the Bishop Hartley Hawks there. That's huge, Randall. Gives them excellent field position. That's about where they've been starting all night, right at the 36-yard line. It's going to be a first and 10. Bishop Hartley, 8.55 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Let's see if the Hawks can put together a drive after a fortunate break off the side of Munyon's foot. Bryson Winbush right side, sweeping around, cuts it back up. Tackled for a loss of a couple on the play. He didn't look like he had maybe his full legs under him there. No, he's, he, I think he's, uh, he's still nursing that hamstring. He couldn't cut it up like he wanted to, so he just depended on getting to the outside. He really should have cut it up. Um, right there on the inside, follow Roberts block. He just couldn't yeah, cut it up. Yep. And maybe just, yeah, maybe a little too patient, but. All right, let's see if Coach Birchfield can drop a little different plan of attack here. Got Ryan Perry, the split out wide receiver near side at the bottom of your screen. Matt Gaelic under shotgun. Robert Lathan, half back. Gaelic rolling to his left. Bryson Winbush across oh. the middle of the field. The catch at the 45 is complete. A gain of about nine on the play. Great throw and catch there. Gay look to Winbush. And Winbush dragged all the way from the backside. Yeah. And uh, so you're passing through the linebackers, which is uh, dangerous territory. And the quarterback was patient, waiting on him, and hit him right on the shoulder. He has a nice throw by Matt Gaelic there, turning back across his body. Third manageable. Third and two from the 45. Seven and a half to play here in the fourth. Robert Lathan. That's a big play. That's a big play by Robert Lathan. Was almost Lathan tackled for a loss. First down. First down. Dives around his man into contact and they give it to him at the line. It's a pickup of three. First down on the play for Robert Lathan. Fresh set of downs for the Bishop Hartley Hawks. And I really thought they uh, snagged on his uh, face mask. Hartley. 
All right, Perry and Wooten come into the bunch formation. Robert Lathan and Ralston in the backfield. Seven minutes, first and ten. Counter inside, Joey Wooten eludes a man. Gets tackled by three guys in to Sheridan territory. That's a gain of about eight on the play. Great pickup by Joey Wooten. Great play call there. Yeah, and Joey's very patient, and as he's going behind his blockers, he's chopping his feet, keeping his head down the field, pinching onto the ball, feeling the pressure come from behind, but he just keep moving uh, forward with the pile. Great run by Joey, and that's the way you want to start a first down. That's what you want to see, second and two. Really opens up the playbook for the Hawks here. 6.23 remaining. Ball on the Generals, 44. Oh, good call. Holds to his right, Ryan Perry catches it. Stiff arms a man, stiff arms a second man. Tackled at the 34. First down, First Bishop Hartley. Ryan Perry, number five. Perry gets to the 34 yard line. And that's always dangerous as that wide receiver comes back inside and all that traffic and he has that ball on the inside. <laughs> so you, you're exposing that ball out for anybody just to hit you and, and punch at. So you gotta be very careful uh, doing that. First and 10, Bishop Hartley from the 34. Lathan, canner inside. Tackled at the line of scrimmage by the Generals. No gain on the play. Wooten's a little slow to get up. I think he was just waiting. Yeah, he's down at the bottom, bottom of the pile, he's ran an inside counter. To the 34 yard line. Second down 10. Hartley's offense is really setting up some good stuff here. Uh, so they're going off that counter, they're doing some play action, uh, finding some open receivers. This has been a really good mix of offensive play caller. 5.20 to play, second and 10. Perry in motion on the sweep, he gets around a man, makes his move for the sideline, drugged down by the back of the jersey. Ryan Perry. Tough carry there by Ryan Perry. Almost tackled in the back of him for a loss, but able to get around the man. All right, we're inside the five minute mark here as the clock is running. 4.53. And this is, this is two down territory. So you basically don't need to get it all right now on third down. Make sure you get at least five on this third down so you can be in a, in a, a situation where you can get a first down. Yep, third and nine. Down seven points, you need a touchdown here. Win in advance, the Sheridan crowd, the Red Rage is on their feet. And I think we're gonna have a delay a game. That Sheridan crowd might have made a call timeout. Time right yep. And Coach Birchfield was on it. The Generals thought they got a delay a game, but sure enough, Coach Birchfield, him and his crew are on it, calls a timeout. So we've got a timeout on the field taken by Bishop Hartley Hawks. They are facing a big third and nine from the ball on the 33. Four minutes, 22 seconds remaining. Hawks trail by seven. It is all on the line now, win in advance. Losing, that's the end of your season. That was a good timeout call. Uh, you have to make sure that everything is set. And if you don't have your play call set, people set, go ahead and blow a timeout right now because this is critical. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, you mentioned it. They've got a good play. They've got a good drive going. Some counters inside, the screen pass outside. The drag across, so they've done it a few ways. Let's see what they go to here. Robert Lathan, the tried and trusty halfback, is right next to Matt Gaelic in the shotgun. Two wide receivers up top, third and nine. Got a man open downfield. Ryan Perry catches it securely for the first down. Bishop Hartley tackled at the 20. And Perry came right out of his route into his break and raised his hand that he was wide open and the quarterback found him and uh, it's a good placement on the, on the ball. He secured the ball looking it in. Perry had a couple drops at the beginning where he didn't look the ball all the way because he's yep. ready to turn and run. That's right. All right, four minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. First and 10, Bishop Hartley Hawks from the Generals 20 yard line. Robert Lathan up the middle. 
Shreds one tackle. The ball comes out late after contact. And it looks like they ruled him down ahead of time. Might have came out after contact. A big gasp from the Sheridan crowd here. And the clock continues to run. Three minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Second down, five yards to go. Ball on the 15-yard line. Matt Gaelic in the shotgun. Robert Lathan to his right. The toss to Lathan towards the right edge. A little bit of room. Should be just a little short of that first down marker. It's tough to see. And I, I love this play when they go to the boundary like that. I mean, it is straight carnage on the sidelines. And he's a big back. He can handle some of that. Just to carry a one on the play, though, that'll bring up a third and four. Third and four, and the Hartley faithful are on their feet in the stands. Sheridan uh, are cheering, so let's go. All right, Gaelic pulls back out. He checks the sideline. Back under center, third and four. Three minutes and 14 seconds left. And we have got a timeout, Sheridan. Timeout, Sheridan. And Hartley knows this is two down territory, so oh, yeah. they basically got the, the big Buford in there. They got the triple stack eye, go. and they're going to try to pound it into that first down. Valley, and they got a couple ways to do that. Robert Lathan, certainly the choice. And we'll see. We've got 314. Like I said, Bishop Hartley trails seven. If Hartley scores, do they go for two? That's the conundrum. Well, it's like John Cooper, the old Ohio State football coach, used to say, hey, it's fun. <laughs> it's always fun to gamble with somebody else's chips. So every dad, uncle, mom out in the stands has a play oh, yeah. that they want for two points. They want to do the Statue of Liberty and everything else, right? <laughs> so you win the shortest way, you get the points and live the fight another day. Well, and as we've seen tonight, extra points are no sure thing. Coming off their last one, the snapper drops that one. That's right. So, things were going good. Connor Bjornsson's got a solid foot. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here, folks. We have got three minutes and 14 seconds left. Bishop Hartley offense takes the field, third and four from the 14. Costa Lathan up the middle. Lots of room. Crashes into a Sheridan defender tackled at the two yard line. Big gain by Robert Lathan. That'll be plenty for a first down. That'll bring up first and goal on the three yard line. And these kids on both sides, they're just playing so hard. When you're seeing offensive alignment and defense alignment just laying on the ground, rolling around in pain, hobbling back up both sides, lining back up like warriors. First and goal. Running off the field for the Generals. Might have caught him with too many men on the field. But it mishandled the snap. Bishop Hartley fumbles the snap. It's in the pile, recovered by the Sheridan Generals. Sheridan had two guys on the field when the ball was snapped. There's a flag on the play. That's what I saw, the two guys running off. I thought Hartley caught him with... All right, they rule it. They rule a turnover on the play. Sheridan Generals have the ball. What I saw was 14 people on the field. Yeah. But they must have not seen this side of it. No, the official pointed at the two guys running off. The official down at the bottom pointed at two guys running off. And they were still on the field when the ball was All snapped. Right. But they didn't call it. All right. But, okay, just Gaelic under centered, maybe just trying to hurry. Bishop Hartley trying to get the hurry and maybe get the call. Leads to a bobbled snap. I'd like to take a look at that replay again after this play. First and 10, Sheridan has the ball. Ball on their own eight. And they've got a little miscommunication trying to get lined up here. And Sheridan takes time out. All right, here's a replay of that snap. Oh, Gaelic Sheridan. under center right there. Their final timeout. And yeah, it looks like he just mishandles the snap, setbacks a little bit. His guy gets blocked back into him and just comes out right there at the end. 
Yikes, hard to see exactly. Great look from the camera there. Tough, tough call. Yeah. Well, in the minute the ball is snapped, the flag should have been thrown, right? So there's a flag for two guys being on the field still. <laughs> Maybe and, one. And they run right past the official, so the official sees them, and he even points at them to let the other officials know that you got two guys still on the field as they snap the ball. All right, we've got 252 remaining here in the fourth quarter. The Sheridan Generals with a seven-point lead after taking over after a fumbled snap by Matt Gaelic. A first and goal from Hartley goes south, hands it back to the Generals. Just got to get a couple first downs and secure this one. So here we go, folks, coming out of a timeout. Caden Sheridan into shotgun, first and 10. Ball on the eight yard line. Nice little run there by Munyon as he leaps over one of his individuals, a gain of two yards on the play. That'll bring up second eight. We've got 238 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Clock running. The clock is running. Bishop Hartley doing their best. Got to get a stop come up big here. It's a big second and eight. Sheridan milking the clock. We're down to two minutes and 20 seconds. Ball on the 10 yard line. Five on the play clock. Sheridan out of the shotgun. Hands it off. Up the middle. Tackled at the 10 yard line. Two minutes remaining. And Hartley's defense was all over that one. Uh, so you got this third down. If I'm Sheridan, do I, I just run my quarterback? Yeah, I would run it with the athletic Caden Sheridan. You get, just like Hartley had happen there, you can't risk anything going wrong with a handoff as we've got one minute and 35 seconds remaining. We got third and eight, ball on the 10 yard line. Let's see what the Sheridan Generals choose to do. Yeah, you take your best player, which is that quarterback, and you run him towards the wide side, chew up as much time as possible. Hartley has to get to him as quickly as possible and, and tackle him. Man, the play clock. There you go. Yep, delay a game on Sheridan. The play clock ran it down. As we mentioned, they are taking their time here. That'll bring up third and 18, though, and that'll back them up to their own five yard line. One minute, 19 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Ball in place the five yard line. This yeah. division four regional semifinal of the 2023 state playoffs. Once again, one minute, 19 seconds, third and 13, ball on the five. Four wide receivers. Sheridan out of the shotgun. Hand off up the middle. Munyon again, got some room at the far sideline, shoved out of bounds at the 14 yard line. Gets out of bounds, that will stop the clock with a minute and 14 seconds left, which is exactly what Bishop Hartley needed. A little bit of time left, one minute and 14 seconds left. Fourth and five for the Generals. And that saved them from making that timeout, right? Yep. So that's, that's a free timeout. Yep, that's exactly right. Help Bishop Partley save that last one. Because Bishop Partley just has one timeout remaining. Back to punt. There's Munyon again. Wobbly kick lands at the 45, takes a Sheridan bounce. Got to pick that up. Yep, that's what I thought. Down to the 40, 37. Yeah, Ryan Perry might have wanted to cover that. But we had an incident earlier, so. All right, Bishop Hartley has got 59 seconds. Down seven. And they got to go 63 yards with one timeout. And once again, Ryan Dietrich and Randall Sampson here broadcasting live from Whitefield, Newark, Ohio. This is the Division Four Regional Semifinals. Bishop Hartley, 60 seconds to go, 63 yards. Here we go, Matt Gaelic rolls to his right. Alex to tuck and run and gets blasted as he gets to the sideline. 
Gets out of bounds, though. Stops the clock with 52 seconds. Yeah, that's a good run by the quarterback. Nothing was open. Turned it up and then dove to the sideline to get out of bounds. Sean Griffey, number 64. Now, we remember Hartley had to drive earlier, first quarter. 45 seconds for a touchdown? That's right. All right, Matt Gaelic checking to the sideline. The Sheridan general defense is awaiting. Second down, seven to go. Ball on the 40. 52 seconds remaining. Gaelic airs it out deep for Ryan Perry. He's got his man. And just out of the fingertips, play broken up. That was good defense by A.J. Winders. But there it was. Gaelic had his man. Perry had a step on him. Perry split both of those defenders <laughs> and got his hands on it and just couldn't hang on to that cold ball. Yeah, I think A.J. Winders got in there at the end and just kind of dragged him down yeah. a little bit. Tough, great play by both sides, the offense and the defense. 46 seconds remaining, third and seven. Bishop Hartley. Fidelis in motion, wide open, near side across the 50. Good catch and run there. It's a big first down conversion. All right, first down, Bishop Hartley, clock's running. 35 seconds remaining, first and 10. Got to get out of bounds. Perry, yep, does the smart thing. I'm not sure, oh. no, he didn't get out of bounds. Hartley might have to use that to final timeout. Clock's running, 20 seconds remaining. First and the spike it. And they've... 14 seconds remaining. I'm not sure why Coach Birchfield didn't take that timeout 10 seconds ago right after the play, but. Yeah, that was critical. Should have took the timeout on that one. And uh, receiver should have gone out of bounds. He tried. Yep. But yeah, you. That, that little stiff arm. And yeah, timeout called before the spike. They shouldn't have. Coach Birchfield, they just lost about 10 seconds. Not calling that right when Ryan Perry got tackled. Not sure what the miscom was there. But all right, here it is, folks. It's going to be second and four. Basically, second and goal for the Bishop Partley Hawks from the 41 yard line. They trail seven, 14 seconds remaining. That's all. <laughs> You can maybe run one quick out to the sideline to get yourself closer for a shot at the end zone, but. Yeah, and you got to go perimeter just to, you know, manage you the pocket get, yeah. to do that, but you can't go over the middle. Yep. No timeouts remaining, 14 seconds left. Season on the line. Galix drops back, airs it out deep. Fidel Samoja across the middle, he catches oh, it. Oh, he caught and dropped and it at the end. And it's broken up in the end zone. Can't complete the catch of Moja in his hands and out. Great defense there by Braden Weaver, number nine. And Weaver may be dragging on his jersey a little bit. Well, he had it, then went down on the ground, hit it. Yep, tough, yeah, couldn't come up with it. Makes the catch as he's falling to the ground. Tough play by Fidel Moja there. All right, here it is, folks. Third and four, seven seconds remaining. <laughs> All right, crowd's on the feet. It is loud here at White Field. Flag. Illegal substitution? No, nope, it's gonna be a delay of game. Delay. And it'll back him up five more yards. Bishop Hartley unable to get the play off. Third down and nine. Okay, third and nine now. Ball in the 46, seven seconds remaining. Four wide receivers out of the shotgun. Season on the line as they trail by seven. Gets rid of one across the middle tip. Ball's incomplete, two seconds to go. There's still time left on the clock, folks. It's gonna come down to one final play. Yeah. 
tough series of events here for the Hartley Hawks. That delay game costly five yards. Well, as you can see, the quarterback has an arm. He just needs a little bit of time. That's so give right. him some time and let him, uh, let him launch it into the end zone. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go, folks. This is it. Two seconds to go. This is the final play of the game. Good protection. He launches it. A little too far out of the reach of Emoja. And it's intercepted by the Sheridan Generals. Jacob Householder ends it. And that'll do it. The Sheridan Generals defeat the Bishop Hartley Hawks 34 to 27. What a game, what a game. You got to give it to both of these teams. They showed up, wow. gave it the best that they could. Sheridan came out on top tonight. Uh, quarterback did a yeah. great job. Their defense uh, hung in there. Hartley did a good job rallying from behind, fighting back, clawing back. Great game back and forth. First off, I'd like to thank everyone out there who's watching, who's tuned into the broadcast. We appreciate your support. Appreciate all of you tuning in on a Friday night here with us to watch the game. It was a big one, it was a good one. So thank you to all the fans out there tuning in to this broadcast on the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Yamo Sports. We appreciate you. What a tough one, that's a heartbreaker for the Bishop Hartley Hawks as they lose 34 to 27. And we talked about it last week, we talked about it during the game, the little mistakes, the little penalties, all those things like that, they just added up too much and eventually Hartley couldn't overcome it. Yeah, you cannot have compounding penalties yeah. with teams like this, yep. uh, especially when you get this deep into the playoffs. And uh, it's going to be a buzzsaw when you run into a team like this with compounding penalties. Yep. And, you know, you know, hats off to both teams. Both sides made some great plays. Special teams, there were some big offensive plays, some big turnovers. Um, so hats off to both these squads and all these high school athletes. Best of luck to the Sheridan Generals advancing and moving on to the regional finals. I'll have to pull up a um, check the score from Steubenville in Indian Valley, but Steubenville was up two touchdowns at half. So we'll look to see who the Sheridan Generals play. Heck of a scene by the Bishop Hartley Hawks, finishing at 10 and three, making it to the third round of the playoffs. Um, we didn't quite make it to that Birchfield Thursday you were talking about, but um, it's it's been one heck of a season for the Hartley Hawks, and we can't wait for we can't wait to bring this squad back and see what they can do next season. Yeah, the Hawks will bounce back. Uh, you know, sad to see them go out this way, but yep. you know, it's it's. I'm telling you, when you run into a good team like this, they they won last week 42 to nothing, and yeah. for you to yep. show up uh, tonight and uh, hang in there toe to toe with this squad. That was tremendous. That's right. Yeah, a little different feel for Sheridan shutting their opponent out this week, but it came down to the wire. Gave them everything they got and all they could handle. So it's been a heck of a season. We thank all of you for tuning in once again. I'm Ryan Dietrich alongside my partner, Randall Sampson, proudly broadcasting on the Bishop Hartley Hawks Network, powered by Yamo Sports. Thank you all. Have a good night and good no good luck next week to the Sheridan Generals. Go Hawks.